Welcome to this tutorial on how to set up your OpenGate small business software to be able to track expenses against invoices so that you can quote your customers a specific price based on labor expense as well as uh, be able to track that to get a P&L. The first thing you want to do once we're in the home screen here is go to your launch pad and select the labor rates. It's off screen here a little bit. Under labor rates is where you set up the specific types of labor rates that you have for your business. I've just added a design labor type for $120. I'll also add an hourly rate, let's say for $90 for construction. Now as I add this, it's going to ask me, do I want to add this to the list? And so these labor types are where you're going to be able to attribute a specific line item on your invoice uh, and you'll be able to collect the P&L for that. The next step is actually tracking this in your order. So let's go ahead and create a sample order here. And I'm going to choose my customer who submitted it. And in the line items, of course I'd have any kind of products that I'm going to be providing. And then down in the services is where you're going to um, have whatever services you offer. So in this case I've got some existing services and I might say this is going to take two hours. My negotiated rate is already built into the system when I've uh, set up this service. You can of course uh, just add new services on the fly. And here you'll see there's a labor group which corresponds to what we've just added. So let's say that um, this particular task takes some uh, construction work and design work. So I can estimate the number of hours. It automatically defaults into whatever I said the quantity of hours was that I'm quoting the customer. So you can set these to be distinct. So as an example here, my cost is $90. What I'm really going to quote the customer is $149. The actual hours is where you're going to be able to track against this particular task over time to get your P&L. So I could use this same task, let's say, and uh, as I do that, I might say I have three hours of design work. Okay, so here I'd change that rate to whatever I wanted it to be. Maybe I'm going to quote the customer. $160 for that. I'll set these both to be one-time activities. So now I've got for the same exact element of service, just installation, I've got some design work and construction work. Um, these are going against different labor groups with different hours and of course I can enter as I actually do the work. I might say it only took one hour and two and a half hours here. Now this tracking is really just for your internal purposes. So what the invoice will show We'll go ahead and show the invoice here is it will show what you quoted in terms of the price and the quantity of time right here so the actuals of course is in the background um, of what you actually uh, spent on those tasks but that will give you the opportunity to take you know this line total of two hours uh, and we know that one was for the uh, construction work and match that up against that construction labor to get your P&L So to get our P&L, let's go ahead and go back to this job here. And we've got an order profit and loss item right there. So when you click this, it will open up and show you your services, what, you're, uh, what you quoted for them, what you actually uh, spent on that, what your burdened rate was, your labor rate. Um, that'll give you the cost, of course, and then you've got a picture of it cost $390 in this case for this particular job, and your revenue was $1,127, so it gives you your P&L snapshot right there. If you need to enter in your purchase order numbers and things of that nature, you've got that here in the order entry. And another feature that many customers want is that they have their own order or job number they want to be able to attribute here. So you can actually set that. If you click on the configuration option here, application preferences, under orders, 
where it says use custom order number. So I'll click that and I can say what I want my starting number to be. So if you've already been tracking your orders for quite some time, you might say that your starting number is 236. So the next order will be 236. So as I come in here, you'll note that these are empty. The reason for that is because these are existing jobs and you need to be able to add that job number here. So I might say 231. In the background, we're still tracking that uh, automatically sequenced order number, but now when you look at your invoices and uh, other areas, you're going to see this uh, custom order number show up. Um, now note, you have to double click this link once you start using the custom order function in order to uh, pop up the window since it uh, needs to be able to let you enter that information. Uh, if you uh, just clicked once, you'd, you'd never be able to do that. So this is how you can set it up to basically track your orders, your items for those orders, as well as tracking your actuals against what uh, your labor was for that project. If you have any questions, there's the online support forums, online support pages, or email support at opengateSW.net. Thanks so much.